Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another series from my channel Interactive Education and today we'll be starting the first chemistry chapter for the second term in class 10 that is carbon and its compounds. So basically carbon and its compounds this chapter is basically you know it revolves around the element carbon. Now, carbon is a very, very important element in our lives because carbon is the main constituent of almost all the molecules which are involved in, uh, in maintaining life. Carbon is a very important element. It forms many, many compounds and many of the life molecules, the bio molecules that we used, uh, that we use almost all of them are carbon compounds, mainly carbon compounds. And this chapter is basically an introduction into a branch of chemistry we call organic chemistry. And organic chemistry basically revolves around the study of molecules of matter which is found in, on the Earth's surface. This is not artificially made, artificially prepared. It is actually naturally found. The naturally occurring minerals, naturally occurring substances. Studying them is what we call organic chemistry. And all organic, almost all organic molecules are carbon compounds. Hence, studying carbon is a very, very important aspect, right? Now, carbon is basically an element with atomic number six. It has atomic number six. That is, it has six protons in its nucleus and six electrons um, in its orbits in ground state. When it is not charged, at that time, it is uh, six electrons. But carbon, it, is, it has six electrons and its, uh, and its electronic configuration is 2,4. So you know that its outermost configuration is 2, comma, uh, its outermost, electron, uh, outermost electrons are four in number and its valence shell, that is, that is its outermost shell, has just four electrons. Now we know the octet rule, if you remember, and if you don't uh, really know about this, please check out my video on chemical bonding. I've explained this. So octet rule. Octet rule basically states that to gain stability, there needs to be eight electrons in the outermost shell. In outermost shell. So there need to be eight electrons in the outermost shell of an atom for it to be stable. Now to gain this stability, if it does not have this octet in its outermost shell, to gain it, it can go for chemical bonding. Right? It can form bonds. And how can it form bonds? Chemical bonding. Or it can also go for loss or gain of electrons. Right? These are the two ways in which it can gain an octet. Now look at carbon. Carbon has four electrons in, it, in its outermost shell. So if we look, at, look uh, into this in terms of losing or gaining electrons, we can say that carbon has two choices because it has four electrons. Number one, it can lose four electrons. Lose four electrons. Right? And if it loses four electrons, it can gain a charge of four plus. Right? But this is impossible. Why? Because to lose four electrons, to lose four electrons, you need to remove four electrons from the outermost shell. And this requires high amount of energy. High amount of energy. This requires a lot of energy. So, again, it is a problem. Since it requires so much energy, well, it's very, very difficult to obtain that amount of energy to remove the four electrons from the outermost shell. So usually carbon does not form a cation with four plus charge. Let's look at the other case. The second case, the second alternative that carbon has is to gain four electrons. But again, gaining four electrons will give it a charge of C4 minus. But again, we don't have this either. Why? It's because carbon can gain four electrons. And if it gains four electrons, well, it is difficult to put four electrons in a small atom like carbon. So if there are, well, the protons will remain constant. So there'll be eight protons. And if you add four electrons more, they'll become 10 electrons in total outside, right? So eight protons, excuse me, not eight, it's six, six protons. So six protons and 10 electrons. 
So you can see that how much electrostatic force will be there, right? There will be instability. Charges will not be balanced. So there will be instability, right? Instability. And since there is instability, we don't want an unstable atom, do we? No. So obviously it can lead to instability, right? And another thing which can happen as well, you need a lot of energy plus a lot of energy released. There is a lot of energy released when you add this many electrons, which is very, very difficult to handle, to, you know, organize. So again, because of these reasons, we don't consider this as well. So carbon does not lose electrons. It doesn't gain electrons. Then how does it gain stability? And how can it form so many molecules? Well, that's why we take up the concept of bonding, right? Carbon does not lose or gain electrons and hence does not form ionic compounds. So since carbon does not form ions, does not form ions, so it's obvious that it will not form ionic bonds or ionic compounds. Does not form ionic compounds. So what does carbon do to form compounds? It takes up covalent bonding forms covalent bonds right so covalent bonds are the bonds which carbon are the is the type of bond which carbon forms and to, uh, well for a brief introduction to covalent bonds these bonds involve sharing of electrons sharing of electrons right so they don't lose or gain electrons, but it shares electrons with other atoms to form co uh, to form a stable compound, right? So carbon takes up covalent bonding. I will not be discussing covalent bonding in this series because I have made a separate video on covalent bonding in um, my series on chemical bonding. So I'll put the link in the description below and even as a tag right here. You can check it out. So thank you very much for joining me. This was an introductory video to carbon and its compounds. From the next video, we will be talking about the next topic, which is your how carbon can form compounds. And obviously, covalent bonds, I'm not going to be discussing because I've made videos on that already. So we'll be moving on to another uh, property that is the versatile nature of carbon. We'll be talking about tetracovalency and we'll be also be talking about catenation. Thank you very much for joining me. Goodbye. Stay healthy. Stay smart. Bye bye.